So in simple linear regression, when we had a nonlinear relationship, we could try a transformation. But since we know multiple regression, and it's pretty simple to input into R, we've got another strategy. We can add powers of our predictor variables. For example, your diamond data set that you can download, it's included in Canvas along with your lecture notes for this set of lectures. Um, diamond prices. So this data set contains information on the price, carat, color, clarity, and depth for 351 diamonds. Suppose we want to predict price from carat weight. We've got a scatter plot pictured here, and it price increases with carat weight, and it looks like the relationship should be modeled using a curve. So let's introduce the quadratic regression model. The quadratic regression model is a polynomial regression model where you just have a quadratic term, a squared term. So you have beta naught equals beta 1x plus beta 2 times x squared and then plus some error. The usual regression assumptions hold. Note that this is still considered linear regression since it follows the form of having beta naught plus beta 1 times a predictor plus beta 2 times a predictor, even though the x's are clearly related. Notice that it is linear in the coefficients, in the beta coefficients, so that's why we call it still linear. All right, so we fit this quadratic model, and you can see that it looks like it fits pretty well to model price from carat for diamonds. So what I did was I created a column in R that was the squared column of the caret column, and I called it caret two. And I've got my output right here. And you can practice creating those kind of columns doing your practice homework. We've got the R code all laid out in there for you. It'll walk you through how to do it. So I have an intercept, my term, my coefficient on caret, and my coefficient on caret squared. So it looks just like any other regression output. Notice that our R squared is pretty high at 0.926, and it was 0.863 when I ran a simple linear regression with just caret and not caret squared. And the adjusted R squared is also high at 0.925. Now one thing that adding this quadratic term does is it tests for a nonlinear relationship. Since our squared term is also significant, it tells us that there is a quadratic relationship. So notice the quadratic term and the linear term are both highly significant. Um, and I said that was a good test. That p-value for the squared term is a good test for whether it is actually it has a bend in it. And notice that if the quadratic term is significant and the linear one is not, that's not the case for us, but if you have a significant p-value for the squared term, and a non-significant p-value for the not squared term, it is conventional, conventional to keep both of them in the model anyway. All right, so if we look at the assumptions, remember the usual assumptions a hold, hold. The errors are independent, they have mean zero, constant variance, and normality. So notice that there looks like the variability is not constant. It looks a little bit like it increases and then possibly decreases. It also appears the errors do not have a normal distribution from the QQ plot, but we do have a large sample size. So use caution when using this model to make inference, but it still gives us good information about the relationship between diamond prices and carat weight. Keep in mind, if collinearity is a concern, since x and x squared are completely related to each other, so if collinearity is a concern in the quadratic regression model, Fit the model with x as your first predictor, and instead of just x squared, do x minus the sample mean of the x's squared. It turns out that if you do this, the quadratic term has zero correlation with the linear term. So you'll, you'll get rid of your problem of co collinearity. Now, sometimes it's beneficial to add additional polynomial terms, a cubed term, one to the fourth power, etc. So the quadratic regression model is a special case of the general polynomial regression model. For a single quantitative predictor x, a polynomial regression model of degree k is y equals beta naught plus beta 1x plus beta 2x squared plus beta 3x cubed plus da 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 
theta k x to the k plus some error. All right, so sometimes it's beneficial to combine the idea of adding powers of predictors and adding interaction terms. Quadratic terms handle curvature. Interaction terms account for effects at, a, at particular combinations of predictors. So we're going to introduce something called the complete second order model. This includes linear and quadratic terms for two quantitative predictors along with the interaction term. So notice that we've got an x1 and an x2, x1 squared, x2 squared, and then the interaction x1 times x2. And we have the usual coefficients on these five terms. We've got the beta naught intercept and then our beta 1 through beta 5 coefficients on our, on our predictors. So that is called the complete second order model. As with any other multiple regression model, make sure to guard against overfitting.